Gentlemen, we can communicate between Washington and Boston, Washington and New York, Washington and Chicago, but we still can't communicate from San Francisco. We simply can't afford to have half of this nation cut off. Until we can link this country together by telephone, we're just not a country. But we can use code. We have facilities for that right now. Code? I need not remind you, gentlemen, that this is the 20th century. The president is counting on us to make an impression at the Panama Pacific Exposition. We must make an international statement on behalf of the United States. But that expo is it's less than a year away. It can be done. We're talking about a stretch across the Nevada desert. It's the most godforsaken country on earth. No roads, 120 degree heat. This is a great country, gentlemen, and we're a great company. Together, we can do great things. Form a new holding company if you have to, but do it. Get the job done. And don't worry about the desert heat. We'll begin this project in the winter. Oh, but great. the snow! Gentlemen, I'll give you six months. As it turned out, there weren't that many telephone poles in all of California and Nevada combined. But we got them made special. There was some talk about skinning out some of them new round ones, but there just wasn't time. We met the boats in Oakland Harbor. Now, my job was to get the more than 13,000 extra poles unloaded and hauled on over to the railhead. But from there, we still had the worst part of the trip ahead of us. Even the railroad has a rough time getting over them Sierra Mountains in February. Drifts up to 30 feet high. Still, they, they say we're gonna build it. A telephone line across the whole bloody country. <laughs> I still think they're a, they're a little bit crazy. Listen up, men. This is the biggest project ever undertaken by any telephone company anywhere. I've heard the stories, same as you. I know there's a lot of people that are saying it can't be done. We're going to show them different. you got a lot of miles of mountain and desert staring you in the face. But by September, I want you to be crossing over into Utah. Utah. It was blistering cold when we started out. More than a hundred of us all crammed into four automobile trucks, a tractor, and three automobiles. Don't reckon them automobiles would be good for much. Got 24 wagons, though, and more than a hundred good horses and mules. They ought to get us there. Funny, just when I thought my mule skinning days was over. Speed means everything out here, and the old man's driving hard. Took a Nevada telephone truck through Reno on its way to the front with a load of supplies and people, they, they cheered us all the way. We come right through the heart of the city at 30 miles an hour. It wasn't an emergency call, you understand, just an ordinary trip. But that's the kind of speed we've been moving with in this here job. There ain't a post hole machine made that can do any good under these conditions. But one of our guys had his thinking cap on and he come up with a great big auger. We built it from scratch, and it worked like a charm. Before long, we was digging more than 50 holes a day. Nobody's ever gonna believe it. Hell, I don't believe it. Ah, frozen hard as a rock. Cuss the desert. Hey, partner, bring me up some more blasting powder, will you? Fire in the hole! Yesterday, a windstorm boiled up. The dust was so thick that we lost the wagons. I mean, we lost the wagons. Turned out, they was less than 20 feet away the whole time. Just when the ground thawed up a bit and we got a handle on it, that's when things really got bad. Turned out to be the worst spring in Nevada's history. 
One minute, we was working on solid ground. Next, it was up to our shoulders in water and mud. The lake would be there, rising right out of the ground. I ain't ever seen anything like it. The line stakes we set out a few weeks back, they've all disappeared. Oh, they're out there, all right, somewhere. But now they're under so much water, all we can do is guess. I figure we ought to shut down until it drains off a bit, but the old man says no. He sure is pushing. Never get it before we throw it out. Right. Yeah. Cooking for a hundred men out here in the middle of nowhere or something. Some days you find a scorpion or a long-tailed lizard in a stew, not to mention them rattlesnakes that are always turning up. At night, the coyotes waltz right into camp, bold as brass, and steal a slab of beef right off the cook wagon. Word has it that we'll never make it. Some of the men are talking about cashing in. Seems like forever, but it's just been barely three months. Still, that's, a, that's enough time to add to the litter. Had a couple of colts born this week. Called them Bell and, and Vale. That's one for us and one for the big boss. Just no let up for anyone. Work all day and your dog tired. Then they drag out the acetylene lamps so we can work all night too. Crazy. I don't know how much longer we can keep it up. Oh, B. Snow in the middle of summer. This country ain't ever gonna give us a break. But somehow, I don't know. I just got a feeling, maybe, just maybe, we're gonna make it. We did it. We did it. By God, it ain't no miracle. We did it. Men, 10 years from now, ain't nobody gonna remember what you did out here. You did what they said couldn't be done. You took a ribbon of wire and you stretched it out across the most barren hunk of wilderness in this whole country. We did it. We did it. Nope, you did it. <laughs> The first task given Nevada's fledgling telephone company was complete. It would go down in American history as an unparalleled accomplishment. Although the final splice was made on July 29, 1914, and the line was ready, President Woodrow Wilson's Panama Pacific Exposition was not. The official opening of the transcontinental telephone line was delayed until January 25, 1915, when the first call between New York and San Francisco was completed. It was an incredible distance of 3,650 miles. In the words of one engineer, H.E. Shreve, first, it was a dream, then a possibility, then, somehow, it was done. It was the beginning of America's modern age of communications. <laughs>